basketball video for Thursday, July 25th. Well, we have some interesting developments here. Um, basically, the markets in itself is still really, really relatively quiet. We did get a little bit of a sell-off that we talked about um, because of the transports really starting to break down a little bit. Our leader and the Russell are showing signs of weakness. Uh, that, I think that put a little bit of pressure. Also, we have some earnings come out. Uh, from Caterpillar wasn't so great yesterday, and um, I think that also put a little bit of pressure on the Dow Jones. Nasdaq actually was up because of Apple. Apple uh, followed through yesterday with some nice, uh, nice movement to the upside, which I'll go over in the charts as well. But quickly with the numbers, Dow down 25, Nasdaq up 33 cents, S and P up six and a half, and the Russell down eight. So. Not, not too bad. We did get a little bit of a sell-off. Is there anything to be excited about? Not really. But what we're watching, right, for the bigger picture, it seems to be um, really pushing along nice, quite nicely. Here's the VIX. And I said, look, if the VIX can break down below this area here uh, and then get back into the Bollinger Bands, that would create a buy signal for the VIX, a sell signal for, um, for equities and commodities. However, we didn't get quite down that far, but we did get a follow-through day from yesterday. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but everything that we anticipate or we assume that will happen doesn't always isn't obviously quite like that. Um, you know, we don't have a, pic, a picture perfect market, so we have to kind of work with what we're dealing with. So so far, this is pretty good. Um, even if the market came down one more time uh, and we had a rally and uh, the VIX came down one more time, pushed down, that would be a little bit more ideal. Um, don't forget, in the pre-market, we were up about three, four handles, and then actually, just before the opening, we were up about six handles, and then the market started selling off. So that was a, a quite of a, of a, a pre-market reversal here. And then um, take a look at the dollar. Um, and I've been saying about this for the last week, week and a half. I said, this is going to be the area where I'm looking for the dollar to stabilize here. Now, it doesn't have to be 82, but I was looking at 81.50 to about 82, 81.75-ish area, as you see that the 200-day continues to creep up. So if this can hold and we get another day of, of uh, chopping around in a positive area, um, I think that we can really start to excel to the upside. And that would give us that little sell-off that we're looking for in equities and commodities. Okay. Now, speaking of that, let's take a look at our gold picture. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff on here, but I want to show you. Um, I took a high to low Fibonacci retracement, and uh, we are right into that 38% retracement, as you see, at 1416. We do have a bear flag here, and this downtrend line was breached, right? We broke it, but now we're starting to come back in here. 1350 is that area where I'm looking for that sell. So we're going to see what happens today, but if we take out yesterday's low, um, I think it'd be a safe trade at least to start initiating a short position in gold with your stops, obviously, of yesterday's high. Now, we have that ratio chart from the gold to the SPX. If we can break back above this, right, then obviously that's not good for the short side. But if we can, uh, can stay below it like we have been, and also, as you can see here, we have our stochastics, which are overbought, and our RSI is in that overbought area. Uh, so this looks like a, a compelling trade to the downside here. So I'm watching gold. And again, if we can get the dollar to start uh, picking up a little bit of momentum, then I think you're going to have a little downside pressure in gold. Now, we are down in the pre-market in the S&P. So it looks like as of right now, we may get some follow through. So we'll just see what happens. So let's go into the charts. Um, as you can see here, we, we're still in, the S&P is still in our upward channel, right? But a lot of the two leaders are not, okay? Uh, double top, we failed. We, we were really, really close to that 1,700. Um, but we actually failed, and this is the S&P, this is SPY. We are now still in the channel, okay? So it's still, still bullish. And we could actually get all the way down here and still be bullish. But again, uh, I'm looking for a further downside here. Now, it might not happen today, right? It might, it, we might rally or we might rally the next day and that's fine but if you can see that we're starting to get weakness up here momentum really really started to wane a little bit and the, even if you see the intraday we were just getting inside days inside days inside days telling us there's not enough buyers to push higher right and rightfully so i mean you've rubbed 20 days in a row just about um it, it, the buyers get exhausted and as you can see here we're way overboard on macd overboard on our stochastic so this uh, it's actually healthy for the markets to pull back and this is what we're looking for so let's see what happens today again one day doesn't make a trend we're gonna need a couple of lower lows uh and lower highs to really say okay you know we are in a downtrend here but today i am going to be looking to sell rallies as well just like yesterday and here is the uh, diamonds. Diamonds didn't do much of anything, as you can see here. We're just really consolidating here. But still, double top held, um, at least for now. And we'll, we'll continue to see overbought MACDs and overbought Nostalcastics. 
And this is interesting. This is what I would. This is why I mentioned yesterday that um, I'm looking for more uh, of the market to sell off uh, because of the fact is we had a really uh, bad day in the uh, uh, in the transports, and they really showed signs of weakness. And yesterday we had some follow through here, so we're out of this channel now. Usually we do get a back test. And then that back test and fail is really where you want to start entering the market short. That'll confirm transports are heavy, and that's going to pull probably the market down as well. And hopefully we get a good push in the dollar, and then uh, we can get a nice orderly sell-off to, uh, to obviously we can actually start buying in again in the market. You know, We don't want to be adding positions if, if, um, if you're a longer-term guy or a swing trader. We don't want to be doing that now. We want to be waiting. We want to wait to see we get some sort of a pullback into the averages, and then we can reevaluate adding to positions. But um, I'm, I would not be adding anything at these levels. And then obviously here is the IWM, which is the Russell ETF. We all know that. We have breached. Now remember, the IWMs were the, were the strongest of the five sectors that we follow. Okay, uh, stronger than the transportation sector, right? We had money flowing into it. Now, let's see if it's just a rotation or a pure liquidation. That's what we're looking for. If it's just a rotation out of, out of small caps and into big cap tech again, that's fine. Uh, markets will continue to move higher. But um, keep an eye on the Russell. Keep an eye on the transports, guys. That's going to give us clues during the day, as well as the VIX and the dollar, if this market is headed lower, at least in the short term. And Goldman Sachs. As you can see, double top really held here again. We're still in this downtrend, uptrend channel, excuse me. So we're, I think we just actually closed just out of it. So we're going to need to see this uh, follow through today, and then maybe um, uh, we can look for a nice weak bank for that in that sector. Okay, and same thing with the, with the XLF. As you can see here, breaking down. Now, if the XLF starts to break down, I look for the weakest bank and, um, and look to short it, get, it, get a good position um, and look to short it. And here's Apple. Now, Apple um, had a great day yesterday. Honestly, I'm um, surprised because uh, it was, the charts were so weak. Uh, we held the 20-day, and now we broke right above, to the penny, my, uh, my downtrend line. One day does not make a trend. Remember that. Does not make a trend. If Apple can hold the low of 435, and we can continue to chop around, and then take out this 445, then yes, then I say you have a trade to 470. Absolutely. Um, and by the time that happens, 200 days should come in around here. But um, Apple right now constructive. Today is going to be a big day, today and tomorrow. If Apple can hold that 435 going into the weekend, um, then I'd probably see some positive PR come out on Apple. Um, we did get a couple of upgrades in Apple. So um, that's constructive. That's good. That wouldn't be short Apple, um, but I, I would be looking to buy Apple, not – Probably for a trade, but I would not be looking to buy Apple for um, to start accumulating. Not at least yet. Apple has a lot of proving to do to itself. Okay? And us, obviously. All right? And then here is uh, the Qs. Lastly, the Qs. Coming in from this downtrend channel, as you can see. Uh, excuse me, uptrend channel. Uh, we are now outside of it. So big cap tech having a little bit of problems here. Let's continue to watch this low of 74.25. Uh, in the queues, and if we start to break down here, then um, then I think all bets are off, and I think that big cap taps, we're going to get a rotation out of big cap tap at least going into the early fall, but we'll keep an eye on things. But guys, quick recap. Watch the VIX, watch the dollar, okay, transports, and the Russell. That's going to be really the queue today, and we want to see continued uh, weakness. If we take out yesterday's low on the spiders, then I think you're going to get a little follow-through, and selling rallies is going to be the thing today. Have a great day, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.